Let's take a minute and talk about motion capture. Um, first off, I want to say I'm sorry that it's taken so long for me to get the next video up. As is usual for me, I kind of got going on a little project. I'm doing a short film and uh, it became more involved than I had originally anticipated and now it's like a whole thing. Eventually I'll get it done and get it out there. It's also going to provide me with some footage that I can use for these videos um, as I won't be under NDA for any of that kind of stuff. So anyway, it's coming, I'm working on it, and then there will be more instructional videos that are coming along the way, I promise. In the meantime, I, I did want to take today to talk uh, a little bit about motion capture. Motion capture is something that uh, for a lot of people within our industry, I think that there's a, a certain degree of fear about because it's one of those things where, you know, it's like, oh, they, they got my movement and, you know, now they can use it indiscriminately wherever. But I know for my own purposes, it's a tool that I rely on a lot um, and have more and more over the last few years. In a lot of cases, it's the most expedient way to be able to provide certain ideas within uh, stunt viz. And in other cases, it's really the only option. For the guerrilla fight inside of the cargo plane in Rampage, I ended up motion capturing myself to do all of the movements of the gorilla in that fight. The way that I did that was using two Xbox Kinect cameras. I have to say that was a painful and tedious process. I'm sure that there are other people that maybe have a better system worked out than I did, but uh, it, it was a means to an end for me and um, was also the last time that I use that particular process. Most of the time now what I'm doing is making use of existing motion capture. There's a ton of resources for that kind of thing. In the end, the most important thing about that is that the motion capture files that I'm getting are way cleaner than anything that I could get via the Kinect. When it came time to do the Abar gun battle for Watchmen, I had already done one CG viz for the show. Uh, for a sequence that ended up being written out anyway. But the director for that episode asked if it would be possible for the stunt department to create another CG viz. And so that's what I set about doing and, and put together that sequence in about a week. Again, using a ton of existing motion capture and some live action footage because there was no motion capture available to me that actually had the choreography that I had done for that particular fight. I've also made a lot of use of motion capture for personal projects. You know, one example being a short film called Power Play. Power Play is largely a fight sequence and I pulled motion capture clips and cut them together and created motion blends to the extent that I would say that there's probably a thousand edits within the movements of the fight. You know, as I would choreograph the fight in my head, I'd say, I need a right punch. So I would grab a right punch. I need a left kick. So I would find a left kick. Things have changed though. For me today, it's a little bit like Christmas in quarantine because I got a package. So time to geek out a little bit. Motion capture has been the province of the very wealthy for a long time because you need so much gear. But that started to change fairly recently, especially with the advent of haptic motion capture. Optical motion capture is what most of us in the film industry are familiar with and used to. Haptic motion capture is a little bit different. It does not make use of cameras at all. Instead, it makes use of the same devices that allow for your phone to know how fast you're traveling. After some research, I got in touch with a company called Rococo and uh, Rococo uh, produces something called the Smart Suit Pro uh, motion capture suit, and that's what's in the box. Uh, what's in the box? So there's a little card inside saying, thank you for purchasing our products. This was packed in quality assured by Iva. Once you've unboxed me, make sure to follow our getting started guide uh, by searching getting started at help.rococo.com. We're always there to help. Um, by the way, I, I like I said, I did a fair amount of research um, before getting in touch with Rococo. And uh, one of the things that universally across the board that I've heard and, and has been my experience in communicating with them is that they're awesome people in the company. Um, very 
communicative, very supportive. Um, so it doesn't surprise me. Looks like a tote bag, a hanger for the suit itself. Let's see a USB cable and a few cards and stickers, which is awesome. So getting to the heart of the matter, what we have is the Smart Suit Pro itself. You can feel uh, there's cables that run through the suit and sensors that sit inside, I believe. Let's see. So here's the cable and there's the sensor itself. There are sensors throughout the system. Some Velcro to help make it fit nice and tight. There you go. Fantastic. I can't tell you how excited I am. Uh, the gloves are off. Wow, and this appears to be a, an actual garment bag um, for the suit itself if you're traveling with it, which is great. Everything appears to be you know, super high quality. I'm not surprised. Uh, like I said, I did a fair amount of research. Everything looks uh, great and professional, and um, I'm dying to... Uh, jump in the suit and start playing around. Like I said, I'm working on this short film and this technology is going to help with that a lot. So a uh, little bit of a learning curve for me to go through. I'm going to share some of that process with you guys as well. And uh, I can see a lot of interesting places uh, that, that this technology could go. So um, I look forward to sharing it with you guys. See you next time.